So good afternoon for all of you. Uh, let's go through with the today's lecture. Today we are having lecture number seven, uh, that is visualization analysis and design. Under that entire topic, today we are having the arranging data tables one. So here for this uh, focus on tables, uh, as we discussed uh, on the last weeks, last few weeks as well, we have uh, like uh, data set types. So there are, we had uh, tables and networks and the spatial data as well, spatial data as well. For the tables, as you all know, we have multidimensional tables and also 2D tables as well. So for the 2D tables, that means we have only two dimensions there. And for the multidimensional tables, we have uh, three or more dimensions there. So here with the first one, uh, as the first one here, what? So here you can see the attributes and the items, attributes and the items. So for example, we can, you can, uh, uh, you can go through with the Excel. You can take uh, Excel as the spreadsheet as an example for this kind of a, a table. But for the multidimensional table, you can see like um, cubicle ones. And for the network graphs here, we have, for the network graphs here, we have, um links and nodes so links means the branches and node means these points and also not only that we have trees under trees we have like decision trees as well so uh, we can uh, directly go through uh, with the conditional formatting uh, so on with the decision trees and for the spatial data we have fields as well as the geometric data for the fields, uh, if you have uh, heard, we have electronic fields and magnetic fields as well. These are kind of few examples for the fields. So, for example, Apikshetra Kiala Kiani, Vidyut Shetra Tianama, Etakota Chumbaka Shetra Tianama, and a fields were the Tamai Apimetane Kiani. And for the geometric data as well, we have geometric data as well. There we have the spatial data. So for the positions and node. Okay. So uh, let's move to the next uh, slide. So here keys and values. Uh, hope you can see my screen well. Uh, so if we go through with the keys and values, um, keys are the independent attribute. Uh, keys are the uh, key means kind of an independent attribute and used as a unique index to look up items. Uh, generally, we use it as a unique item. And also simple tables are there uh, for a one key. And not only that, dimensional tables are there. For the dimensional tables, we have multiple keys, but for the simple tables, we have only one key. And for the values, dependent attributes are there. They are, uh, we have value of cells as well. So for the tables, attributes and items, attributes, columns are there. We are using columns as the attributes. And for the rows, we are using items. And uh, here the values are containing on the cells. So cells containing values. And for the multidimensional table, you can see this is an example for three-dimensional table. So for the multidimensional table, uh, that is about the keys and values of that one. So then so then we have the uh, keys and values. Again, key uh, keys are independent attributes and used as unique index to look up items. Up to unique index um your items identify id and for the simple tables we have only one key but for the multi-dimensional tables we have multiple keys and for the values we have dependent attributes so 
yeah we generally use these uh, x values as the independent attributes and we have uh, uh, dependent attributes for the dependent attributes uh, that means the y values so value of the cell itself and classifying uh, the arrangement by uh, keys used so here uh, express values how 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 we can uh, express the value that is um, about so keys here the first key and the second key uh, for the if we are using kind of only one key then example is kind of a list one but if we have a two key if we have two keys to compare and um, to consider that is a kind of an uh, matrix okay so keys and for the express values as well and tables uh, 0 1 2 and attributes and the items rows and with the cell containing values so here we have the multi-dimensional table i explained it earlier as well and then let's move to the idioms and uh, scatter plots so from these idioms first we are going to talk about the scatter plots where we draw these uh, scatter plots are actually if we have like two uh, quantitative variables to uh, quantitative variables to show uh, or compare or if we have like a graph to draw if we have a graph uh, to draw with uh, two or more uh, uh, two or more quantitative variables quantitative attributes then we can have uh, we can draw the scatter plots so for this express values uh, here we can use the magnitudes as well and for that one quantitative attributes are there and uh, for that one no keys and no values as well so express values here we have the uh, scatter plots and uh, carrots and price so and here also we have the uh, carrots and uh, price as well this is kind of a comparison of these two uh, these two uh, values or else uh, these two quantitative variables so that uh, for the two quantitative variables generally we draw scatter plots uh, but for a one uh, quantitative variable variable with a qualitative variable so we can draw a uh, dot plot as well here we have drawn a scatter plot okay and then so uh Uh, no keys uh, only values so for the data two quant uh, attributes are there mark points and uh, channels so uh, horizon plus, uh, plus horizontal plus uh, vertical positions so there we have the horizontal uh, positions as well as the vertical positions as well so here the vertical position is there vertical axis is there this one is the horizontal axis and for the task we have uh, for which kind of task we generally use this uh, scatter plot uh, which, which kind of for which kind of tasks uh, it helps uh, using these scatter plots for example find friends outliers distributions and uh, correlations and clusters so on so for the scalability uh, we are using hundreds of items as well okay then we have uh, scatter plots encoding more channels for the additional channels variable uh, since using a uh, point marks here uh, we have the uh, colors and also size so from those two we are like um, we are uh, encoding more channels actually uh, from these ones we can cat we can represent any other categorical variable as well um, on the uh, scatter plot itself with the quantitative variables itself so that one is it so that you can um, say use here we have like x-axis is there and the vertical axis y-axis is there with that one with the green color and the size of the dimension we are representing another variable as well 
So that might be a qualitative variable, that might be a qualitative variable. So for this uh, scatter plots, we can interpret more and more data uh, from this uh, size and the color. And not only that, we can have the shapes as well. So here we have the small circles and then stars and then plus marks likewise and so on. So scatter plot tasks, what are the scatter plot tasks? Uh, so here, as I mentioned you earlier, anyway, scatter plot tasks are first one is the correlation. So correlation means actually comparing or comparison of uh, two variables, two quantitative variables, whether we have, whether, whether we have like a, a whether we have a linear relationship among these two here. So for the correlation, so if we have like a perfect positive correlation, then uh, the correlation coefficient, we are calculating correlation coefficients for uh, or among two quantitative variables on there. If we receive the correlation coefficient as one, then that means actually the value is uh, then those two variables has a, a perfect positive linear relationship. And if we have like the correlation coefficient, we generally denote it as R. And R, if the R is uh, around or near the 0 0.9 value, then that means high positive linear correlationship. If we have 0 0.5 uh, as the uh, correlation coefficient, then that means low positive correlation, low positive correlation. And for the zero, we have no correlation. And uh, minus 0 0.5, we have low negative correlation. And minus 0 0.9, we have the high negative correlation. And finally, we have the negative one that is perfect negative correlation. So anyway, for the correlation coefficient, we denote that correlation coefficient um, by r using the r value and that is from the one to one uh, positive one to negative one okay so positive one means the correlation coefficient if the correlation coefficient is equals to positive one then that means perfect positive correlation but if the correlation coefficient is equals to negative one then that means perfect negative correlation Okay, clusters, groups, and clusters versus class. So here we have the clusters. So you also can draw these clusters uh, from these tools itself. So clusters versus classes. Then we have the uh, some keys. So uh, we just uh, discussed about this one earlier as well for the keys we have uh, only one key or else we might have two keys if we have only one key then it would be a list but if we have two keys then that means it would be a matrix so for the express values here we have uh, this one and for the separate order align uh, so this one is uh, some keys of categorical region here we have the separate and also we have to consider the order and not only that we have to consider the align as well. Okay, for that one for the regions separate order align. So regions contiguous uh, bounded areas distinct from each other and separate into spatial regions one mark per region for now. But for the use categorical or ordered attribute to separate into regions, no conflict with um, expressiveness a principle for categorical attributes. So use ordered attribute to order and align regions as well. So here with the regions, contiguous uh, bounded areas distinct from each other separate into spatial regions, one mark per region for now. But for the use categorical low ordered attribute to separate into regions, no conflict with expensiveness principle for categorical attributes. So use ordered attribute to order and align regions as well. Here again with the one key and two key, the same expressions are there. And for the separated... Uh, and uh, aligned and ordered this is kind of another chart 
if you uh, go through with that one, you can see all the bars have separated and also aligned. Not only that, it's already ordered as well. This would be kind of a best case uh, if we can represent the values like this. But this one separated and aligned, separated and aligned, the x axis and the y axis are aligned, but uh, that is not ordered. So it's uh, really hard to find the maximum one. We can find the maximum one very easily. And also we might we can uh, find the minimum one as well. But uh, let's uh, assume that we ask us to find the uh, fourth or the seventh one. Then it's really hard. So it's better if we can order the entire graph and then order the entire graph and then mark it okay likewise so limitations here uh, hard to make comparisons with size versus aligned positions so separated but not aligned or ordered here uh, what has happened um, separated so you can see all the items are separated but what has happened here and also all the items are ordered as well but not aligned or ordered. Aligned velatne uh, and also uh, ordered velatne. But uh, it has kind of a representation with the magnitude circle, magnitude of the circle. But uh, it's separated, but not aligned or ordered. Okay, that's it. And for the idioms, then we are talking about the bar charts. Uh, so for this bar charts, again, we have the one key value as well as the uh, one value, one key as well as the uh, one value. Uh, so they are, give me one. So for this one, one key, one value, uh, data, so one category attribute, uh, if the uh, quantitative attribute is there, uh, if we have like only one quantitative attribute, then mark uh, lines and channels length uh, to express uh, quantitative values and the spatial regions one per mark and separated horizontally that is aligned vertically and also ordered by the quantitative attribute as well, ordered by the quantitative attribute as well. By label, alphabetical, maybe by labeling, uh, if it's better if we can use the alphabetical order and for the by length, for the uh, by length attribute, um, it's better if we can like uh, use the data driven uh, as well. And for the tasks, we have uh, compared and also we can uh, do the compare comparison among these uh, two uh, comparison among these two bar charts. And not only that, we can do a lookup values and uh, uh, get an clarification of the minimum, maximum, or uh, those kind of informations. And for the scalability, dozens, uh, dozens uh, to hundreds of levels for key attributes, that is uh, bars, hundreds for values as well. So then let's move to the stacked uh, bar chart. So here we have the stacked bar chart. So what you have to know here is identify these separate charts um, and just uh, go through and um, identify what, when, when, when and where we use this chart scale. So it's better to identify that one. And one more key. Uh, so that is two uh, data, uh, two uh, categorical attributes. And here we have two categorical attributes and only one uh, quantitative attribute is there. And for the mark, a uh, vertical stack of line graphs and a uh, clip uh, composite objects, internal structure from multiple, multiple marks. And for the channels, length and color hue is there. And for the spatial uh, regions, one per glip, 
so aligned full grip uh, lowest bar components as well and also if it is uh, unaligned then the other bar components are there so for the task uh, part uh, scalability so here i have like uh, because of this chart itself the mentioned uh, data uh, i can't see the mentioned data so anyway it's all about the stacked bar charts and also the properties of the stack bar chart so stream graph generalized uh, stacked graph that is emphasizing horizontal continuity versus vertical items as well for the data we have only one categorical attribute uh, for example we have the movies there and then one ordered key that is uh, attribute uh, time so there also we have only one uh, one uh, attribute and for example, we can say we can uh, get a time and one quantitative values, one quantitative variable, one quantitative value attribute that is counts. So derived data may be sometimes geometric data, layers, where, height, encodes, counts. So one quantitative, one quantitative attribute that is One quantitative uh, attribute layer is there. One quantitative attribute is there. That means the layer ordering. So here we have the idioms uh, that is a stream graphed again. So generalized stacked graph emphasizing horizontal uh, continuity versus vertical items. So for the data, one categorical uh, key attribute that is movies and for the one ordered key attribute that is time, one quantitative uh, value attribute that is uh, we can uh, say we can take an example like counts of these ones. And for the derived data, we have geometric data layers where height encodes counts as well. For the one quantitative uh, attribute, layer ordering is there. For the <coughs> scalability, hundreds of time keys, uh, dozens to uh, dozens to hundreds of uh, movies keys, more than stacked bars, most layers don't extend across whole charts as well so this is these are kind of examples for the stream graphs and the properties of the stream graphs so dot chart or else the line chart first one is the dot plot or else the dot chart and second one is the line chart one key one value so for the data it might be two quantitative attributes or else two quantitative variables for these ones year and the categorical variable um, cat weight here and uh, for the second chart we have year versus the average weight as well so mark points and a line that is connection uh, marks between them uh, with the channels and regions for the task we have find a trend uh, what type of tasks we are like uh, generating for these uh, dot charts and also for the line charts so here you know, find trends connection marks um, emphasize ordering of items along key axis by explicitly showing relationships so here again, uh, we have the uh, dot chart and also the line chart. Uh, one key, one value. So data, uh, two quantitative attributes. Anyway, for these charts as well, we are uh, draw. We are drawn uh, two or more uh, quantitative attributes. So here, for example, year with the cat weight and year with the average weight as well. So mark. Uh, points uh, and line connection marks between them and for the channels aligned lens to express quantitative value separated and ordered by key attribute into horizontal regions that is task so the find uh, trend connection marks emphasize ordering of items along key axis by explicitly showing relationship between one item and the next as well so for the scalability, hundreds of key levels, hundreds of um, value levels as well. And choosing bars versus line charts. So how can we uh, choose 
among these bar we are to draw these bar charts or else the line charts so it's kind of a uh, so we have to like choose what would be the best chart for the given context so depends on the type of the key attribute depends on the type of the key attribute bar charts if categorical uh, bar charts will be uh, like uh, appeared or more suitable suitable if that one is categorical line chart uh, is more suitable if that one is ordered okay and do not use line charts for categorical key attributes as well and violates expressiveness um, principle that is uh, implication of trend so strong so strong uh, that it overrides semantics so this is kind of a few uh, properties of these bar charts and the line charts and also they have mentioned how they are dividing these uh, bar charts and line charts and uh, get an idea which one to which one to uh, which one which one is more suitable for the given context kela and for the chart axis label them best practice uh, to label few expectations are there individual small multiple views uh, could share axis labels so here i think uh, we should give it another shot we should break up and i can approve it so our relationship is there and her maybe uh, you are right i know so this is kind of another labeling part so pictographic ones among these uh, conversations we are among uh, these con conversations we are trying to express few informations to the crowd itself for the crowd so best practice is to label them which one is to which color few expectations individual small multiple views could share axis labels as well for the chart axis uh, avoid cropping y axis include zero at bottom left or slope misleads include zero at bottom left or slope misleads so honest and uh, deceptive so here we have another comparison avoiding a uh, cropping y axis so first one is like starting from the zero y axis but if you check on the second uh, graph it has already started with the 34% uh, percent. so that means it's already uh, so first one is uh, already uh, that one is the honest one but for the second one it's like uh, giving uh, us a, giving us and wrong wrong or oh, misleading yeah, they it is uh, misleading uh, us actually okay so then we have the um, another one that is uh, deceptive and also the honest so first one is uh, also another line so that one is uh, with the zero to the that uh, exact amount and here for the honest one here we have the uh, here we have like uh, starting uh, from in the middle itself so truncating the y-axis and uh, here i have mentioned another another few um another few exam another few examples as well and indexed line charts so for the data we have uh, for this indexed line charts so these type of charts are coming under this uh, indexed line charts so for this indexed line charts also we are using two quantitative attributes and also how we derived data that is new quantitative value attributes that is index or else with the index we are plotting uh, instead of the original value so index and a plot instead of the original values and for the task show change over the time and principle normalized not absolute so scalability same as standard line chart as well same as the previous ones as well and for the grant chart you also may need to draw these graph charts when you all are doing your research you have to provide a time a time plan for your research with all the tasks 
so for that one you can draw a grant chart grant chart easily and show up the timeline so one key two related values so that is data one categorical attribute and also two quantitative attributes and uh, mark the line that is the length that means the duration and for the channels we have horizontal positions as the horizontal position we have the starting time plus the ending uh, from the duration as well and for the task, we have emphasized temporal overlaps and start or end uh, dependencies between items. And for the scalability, dozens of key levels bars are there. And for the hundreds of uh, values, levels, durations as well. And for the idioms, uh, slope graphs, so two values uh, for this one also, we have to compare like two values. Uh, so for the data, two quantitative uh, values or the two quantitative attributes will be comparing under this uh, under uh, this type of a slope graph and also one derived attribute that might change the magnitude as well and a mark point for the line line connecting mark between um, points and also channels for the two verticals uh, positions express attribute values that means the line width or size or the color as well. For the task, emphasize changes in rank or the values and also the scalability that is the hundreds of the value levels, dozens of items as well. So uh, two keys, uh, again, one key now, uh, it could be a list and for the two keys, it would be a matrix. And we have the heat maps as well. Uh, so two uh, keys uh, with the one value. So for these heat maps also, how we draw these heat maps, that is uh, data with the two categorical attributes. So for example, we might uh, use uh, genes and experimental conditions uh, for these uh, two categorical attributes. And for the expression levels, we have one quantitative attribute as well. For the marks point, separate and align in 2D matrix that is indexed by two categorical attributes. For the channels, we have color by quantitative attributes and ordered uh, diverging color maps as well. And for the task, find uh, clusters or the outliers and also for the scalability. One million uh, items or else the hundreds of categorical levels are there. And for the uh, these ones like uh, quantitative uh, attribute levels, this amount of quantitative attribute levels will be uh, drawn or mapped with the heat map uh, ones. So this is kind of a heat map recording, which uh, we have taken uh, from this given link. So then we have the cluster heat map uh, one. So in addition, derived data, two cluster hierarchies are there. And also we have the dendrograms and the heat maps. For this dendrogram, uh, parent-child uh, relationships in pre with uh, connection line marks and also leaves the line. So interior branch or the heights, easy to compare. And for the heat maps, that's all about the dendrograms. And dendrograms means the this one. But for the heat maps, uh, marks uh, reordered by cluster hierarchy, uh, traversal, and also task would be assess uh, quality of clusters found by automatic methods. That's about it. And then we have the uh, axis orientation. This is uh, rectilinear and uh, this is parallel. If uh, uh, that one is uh, looks like two dimensions are like this then we call them as uh, those two are rectilinear that is for the angle um, if we have like 90 degrees now anyway we call them as right angle uh, so then again here the for these ones we call them as rectilinear for the parallel we have a parallel mark here and for the radial we have this amount of mark here and uh, idioms, radial bar charts and the star plot. For the star plot and the radial bar chart and the bar chart. For the star plot, we have line mark, radial axis meet at central point. And for the radial bar chart, we have line mark, radial axis meet at central ring channels, 
length or angles orientation and for the bar chart we have rectilinear axis aligned vertically and for the accuracy we have length not aligned with radial layouts so less accu uh, less accurately uh, perceived than rectilinear aligned as well and here we have the uh, radar uh, plot radial uh, line chart will be there and point marks radial layout connecting connecting line marks and also it will avoid unless data is cyclic so here radar graphs avoid them 99.9 .9 of the time uh, we are uh, like uh, we have to like avoid these radar graphs itself and for the pie charts and uh, coxcomb charts uh, so you can see like for the first one it's uh, an example for the pie chart so in the exam also you should be able to identify the chart what is that chart and how can we draw those charts and where to use these charts here so for the first one it will be pie chart and for the second one it will be coxcomb chart itself for the pie chart interlocking area marks with angle channels so 2d area varies and for the separated and ordered uh, radially uniform height height so for the accuracy area less accurate than rectilinear aligned line length so for the task part two uh, whole judgments are there and for the uh, coxcomb charts that might be like uh, line marks with uh, length channels and also one dimensional length varies and separated and ordered radially uniform width and direct uh, analog to radial bar charts as well and for the data one uh, categorical key attribute and also one uh, quantitative value attribute will be uh, will be uh, uh, will be drawn under uh, will be considered under this uh, data that's about it and for the coxcomb nightingale rose or a uh, polar area chart for the invented by uh, florence nightingale diagram of the course of this is kind of another chart but it's kind of a subjective chart and also specific chart um, with the uh, coxcomb uh, nightingale uh, coxcomb or the nightingale rose or the polar area chart so here invented by Florence Nightingale, diagram of the course of, and um, yes, you can read the remaining part. And for the perceptions also, we have uh, encoding one dimensional length and for the decode or the perceive, we have 2D area, 2D area. So, um, So non-uniform line, non-uniform line will be there or else the sector width as uh, length increases. So the area variation is non-linear, uh, non-linear uh, uh, with like uh, line mark length as well. And for the bar chart safer, we have uniform width. So uh, the area is linear with line mark length both radial and the rectilinear cases are they are under these ones so pie charts perception some uh, empirical evidence that people respond to arc length so decode or perceive and also not angles maybe also areas as well for the donut charts no worse than pie charts no worse than pie charts so uh, these ones for the perception that is the pie charts one so pie charts for the best practices not so bad for two or few levels for part two whole task so uh, like this we can draw these pie charts so that would be kind of a best practice so that uh, user can clearly understand the evaluation or else the evolution of the data and what type of uh, information uh, we are like going to provide uh, so these things they can directly um, 
get an uh, idea at a glance itself. Not so bad for two or few levels for part uh, two whole task and also uh, dubious for several levels if details matter and for the terrible for many levels as well. Idioms, normalized stacked bar chart for this uh, task part two whole judgments, a normalized stacked bar chart, stacked bar chart normalized to full vertical height. So if it is a stacked bar chart, then please uh, make a note on these kind of things. So you may uh, have to face MCQ uh, questions as well on the uh, examination. So uh, there are uh, these kinds uh, we will be tested on the exam itself for the single stacked bar equivalent to full pie chart as well and uh, high information density requires a narrow uh, rectangle and um, for the pie chart information density will be matters and requires a large circle as well and here we have the uh, glee, glim, glim map uh, glyph maps. So for this glyph maps, uh, so first one is a radial uh, good for cycle, cyclic pattern and for the evaluating periodicity as well and for the uh, that one is for second one actually and for the first one rectilinear good for linear versus the nonlinear trends as well. So here also we have the uh, axis, axis orientation and uh, under this axis orientation, we have to consider the rectilinear and the parallel and also the radial also matters. These are kind of few examples uh, for this uh, glyph maps as well. So you can go through with these ones. For the axis orientations, we have rectilinear, parallel, and then we have the uh, radial, uh, radial uh, ones as well. So idiom sp lom that is the scatter plot matrix sp lom and a rectilinear axis uh, point mark. So all possible pairs of axis that is scalability uh, one uh, dozen attributes will be there and for the dozens to hundreds of items. So sp loms so that means the scatter plot matrix. Then again here also. We have the uh, axis orientation under this axis orientation uh, for the rectilinear and also parallel and also the radial uh, data or the information as well. So these kind of graphs, we can say SP loms as well. So another graph type would be uh, the parallel coordinates. Uh, so if we consider the parallel coordinates, for the scatter plot, uh, in, uh, for the scatter plot limitations, we have visual representation with uh, orthogonal axis. So um, that might be a huge uh, limitation on the scatter plot. Uh, on the scatter plot, visual representation with orthogonal axis, and also uh, it can show only two attributes with spatial position channels. So as I told you, uh, for this uh, uh, scatter plot matrices you can like show only can show only two attributes with spatial position uh, channels as well for so here we have the scatter plot matrices and also we have the tables as well for the idioms parallel coordinates are there scatter plot limitations and the scatter plot uh, parallel coordinates under this uh, scatter plot limitations we have visual representation with orthogonal axis uh, can show only two attributes with spatial uh, position channel as well. And uh, for the uh, parallel coordinates, we have the parallel axis. We have the parallel axis. So parallel axis uh, jagged uh, line for item and also rectilinear axis item uh, as a point. So for the axis ordering is a major challenge and for the scalability dozen of uh, attributes, hundreds of items as well. And for the alternative line up axis in parallel to show many attributes with positions, that is the item encoded with a line with N segments and N is the number of attributes shown as well. And for the correlation, then again, uh, this is kind of another task among these ones. For the correlation, we have the scatter plot matrix. 
So for the scatter plot matrix, we have uh, like as I told you, we discussed uh, in the uh, first uh, few slides as well. So for the positive correlation, diagonal low to high, and for the negative correlation, diagonal high to low, and uncorrelated uh, spread out. Then that means uh, parallel line segments are there. And for the negative correlation, we have all segments cross at the uh, halfway points, and for the uncorrelated one, we have scattered uh, crossings as well. For the parallel coordinates, we have only positive correlation as well. So here for each and every graph or else for each and every uh, chart, here uh, I have uh, uh, added few uh, charts. So pictures of these uh, graphs, uh, charts as well, so that you can, at a glance, you can identify what type of a graph uh, or what type of a plot is it? So for the parallel coordinates and the limitations, we have visible patterns only between neighboring axis pairs and also how to pick axis orders as well. A usual solution that is reorderable access and also interactive uh, exploration for the same weakness as many other techniques. So downside of uh, interaction human uh, powered search as well for some algorithms proposed uh, non fully solved as well solutions as well so here we have the orientation uh, orientation limitations for the orientation limitations uh, we have to consider these ones uh, rectilinear parallel and radial so for the rectilinear that is the scalability uh, with the uh, axis and all two axis best three problematic if we have like three axis to consider then that might be a problematic one and also if we have like four plus um, axis then it would be a impossible one for the parallel we have unfamiliarity and for the training time as well and radial we have the perceptual limits and pole coordinate um, asymmetry. So that one is the angles um, lower precision than length. So uh, non-uniform sector with size or the depending on radial distance, that is the frequently problematic one, but sometimes can be uh, deliberately exploited and for two attributes of very um, unequal importance as well. So layout density, for the layout density here, we have to consider about the density as well as, as, well as the space filling as well. Uh, so for the dense software overviews, for as the data, we have text values and text plus one quantitative attribute per line. And for the derived data, we have one pixel high line and also the length according to original. So color line by attributes and for the scalability, we have 100,000 lines. And for the layout density, we have the dense as well. Arrange tables for the express values, we have separate uh, order aligned regions, separate order aligned. And for the axis um, orientation, we have layout density. Uh, for the axis orientation, rectilinear, parallel, radial, and layout density, we have the dense as well. So then again, uh, how can we like encode these ones? First, we have to arrange. Uh, so under the arrange uh, task for arrange segment, we have to express, separate, order, align. We have to consider these four uh, properties of uh, properties and then make our decisions. And for the mapping part from categorical and ordered attributes, and for the color one, it might be a hue, and uh, saturation and uh, luminance one and for the size angle curvature and shape motion these ones we have to consider and for the manipulate face at reduce manipulate we have to consider whether it is change select or navigate and for the face it we have to consider uh, juxtapose and for the partition and also supreme force as well and reduce filter aggregate uh, embed as well these ones we have to consider under the how so chart axis so this one labeled axis is critical so maybe sometimes uh, the labeling part labeling axis is uh, very critical and also uh, we have to avoid cropping y-axis 
uh, we have to like avoid cropping y axis uh, include zero at bottom left or slope misleads as well. So for the uh, dual axis line charts here, controversial, that is acceptable if um, commensive rate uh, be where very easy to misleading as well. Idiom, so for the connected uh, scatter plots, that is scatter plot with line connection marks and popular in journalism, that would be a horizontal uh, axis or else a vertical axis and value attributes as well. For the line connection marks, we have temporal order and for the alternative to dual axis charts as well. So for example, we can say for the horizontal uh, attribute, we have time and for the vertical attribute, we have two value attributes as well. And for the empirical study, we have the engaging but correlation um, unclear as well. So choosing line chart aspects ratios here, uh, banking to 45. Uh, so clear uh, land perceptual uh, uh, argument that would be most accurate angle judgment at this point at 45. And this one multi-scale banking to 45, 2006, that is frequency domain analysis to find ratios. And also FFT, the data uh, convolved with the uh, Gaussian to smooth uh, spikes, ranges in power spectrum. So call nearby uh, regions if uh, similar or else ensure overview and also create trend curves red for each uh, aspect ratios as well. And for the line chart uh, aspect ratios, third one arc length will be there based accept uh, ratio that is uh, 2011 mm. minimize uh, the arc length of curve while keeping the area of the plot constant and also parameterization the scale invariant is there and for the symmetry uh, preserving a robust and fast to compute as well so for the meta points from this uh, progression young field per uh, uh, prescriptive advice changes rapidly and for the reasonable defaults uh, required deep dive into um, perception meets math as well. So maybe sometimes we have to like uh, break the conventions. So breaking the conventions, presentation versus exploration might be matters under this uh, breaking conventions. So here for this uh, engaging or um, evocative, evocative. So we have to consider these uh, ones and also inverted Y axis as well. That is for the blood drips down on fall. So that's all about the, that's all about the entire lecture. So that is about the visualization. So if I uh, go through from the beginning itself, what we discussed, if I summarize, the entire lesson uh, in with a few uh, single words. So we uh, start working with the arranged data tables. So we start working with the data tables. So they are for the visualization analysis and design. So we focused on the tables and we discussed about the keys and the values. So, and then we started to discuss about the charts, first scatter plot, and uh, how we can, um, uh, so generally the scatter plots, we use these scatter plots to draw to um, quantitative variables. But anyway, if we uh, draw, um, uh, if we want to like add a one uh, categorical variable as well, we can like do that. So that one is in the encoding more channels as well for the scatter plot tasks here. And for the correlations, uh, the correlation coefficient varies from negative one to positive one and clusters, groups, and the clusters versus classes as well. Some keys for the separate order align. And regions, separate order align, separate order align. This one is the regions. Uh, and for the use categorical or ordered attribute to separate into regions and use ordered attribute to order and align regions as well. So this one separated, aligned, and ordered, but this one separated, aligned, but not ordered. This one already separated these items, but it's not aligned and ordered. Likewise, then we just discuss about the bar charts, and then we discussed about the 
stacked bar charts and then we discussed about this frame graph and then a dot chart and the line chart and also the um, bar versus the line charts and then labeled them and avoid cropping y-axis we talked about we talked about the um, avoid cropping y-axis uh, index line charts as well to do that um, so put my lecture again so index line charts are there so uh, to do data that is two quantitative attributes so uh, that one would be a one key examine it again one key and uh, one value and for the derived data that is a new quantitative value attribute and uh, for the index values, uh, here we have the index values and for the plot uh, instead of original values. And also for the task, we have a show change over time. So these type of tasks we can use uh, from this index line charts. And for the scalability, we have same as the standard line charts as well. For the Gantt charts, we have to uh, draw uh, with the uh, we have to draw with the uh, Gantt chart that is um, we have to draw with the Gantt chart that is all about the uh, time series chart so this one is that and for the slope graphs uh, two values are there data mark point uh, likewise so we discussed all these ones so if we have only one uh, key, uh, that then that means list. And if we have only two keys, then that means the metrics. So for the heat maps, we have uh, two keys. And for the one value, heat maps as well. And uh, these are kind of few examples for these heat map recordings. And for the cluster heat maps, we have a... Uh, 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 in addition, derived data, dendrograms, and also heat maps and axis orientation. We discussed about that one star plots, radial bar charts, and for the bar charts, and also not only that, uh, we have the accuracy one as well. So, uh, radar plots as well. Uh, these kind of plots we call them as the radar plots, and for the radar graphs, and then we have the pie charts, Coxcomb chart. Um, and a uh, coxcomb nightingale rose or the polar area chart as well so coxcomb perceptions as well and for the pie charts we have the this kind of perceptions and we compared what are the best practices of the pie charts and for the normalized stack bar charts also we di we discussed so for the task part two uh, whole judgments and also normalized stacked bar chart and for the pie charts, we have a uh, glyph maps. That is, uh, we have like two ones. One is the rectilinear good for linear versus nonlinear trends. And for the uh, radial good for uh, cyclic patterns. And axis orientation. And then we discussed about the SP long uh, and the parallel coordinates. Uh, and finally, we discussed about the correlation parallel coordinates limitations and the orientation limitation and then the layout density that is about the uh, when it comes to layout density we have to consider the dense and also the space filling one and the dense software overviews and for the arranged tables that is express values um, separate order align uh, regions and the axis orientation and the layout uh, density and finally we have the how so the encode uh, arrange one and the mapping part and the manipulate face it and the reduce one as well. So for the chart axis, we have this chart axis and for the dual axis line chart, uh, controversial and for the connected scatter plots, we have scatter plot with line connection marks and for the empirical study as well. These are kind of few choosing line chart aspects. So you can go through with these ones. If you have any questions, just ask from me. So I'm available at the department. So you can come to me and uh, meet me actually. And also, if you have any questions, you can send a chat uh, from the uh, LMS so that I can reply, I can reply to you uh, as well.
So that's all about uh, so lecture number seven. See you on uh, the lecture number eight. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day.